and welcome back to Gimmick Cast, where our only gimmick is the fact we make friends with demons so we can kill God. Yes, we definitely do that. I, I don't even get the reference. I, I, it's a Shin Megami Tensei reference, I think. <laughs> yeah, it is a Shin Megami Tensei reference. Um, I, 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 I would know, since I've kind of been getting into Shin Megami Tensei recently. Yeah, and the good thing is, we, there's a reason why we bring this up. We'll get to that later. Um, to be mm. fair, I saw someone sum it up, sum up Shin Megami Tensei to a Persona fan pretty well. Because like, they summed it up to me. So it was like, in Persona, it's about the bonds you make with your friends to kill demons. In Shin Megami Tensei, it's about making friends with demons so you can kill your old friends. I'm like, huh! Okay, pretty man. much. <laughs> like, this is why like a lot of people had a hissy fit when to Tokyo Mirage Session came out. Because that's a Shin Megami Tensei game, but it, it's nothing like a Tim Shin Megami Tensei. <laughs> Shin Megami Tensei game. It's more like a Persona game, yeah. which I kind of get their frustration because I've played through that game, and yes, it plays a shit ton like Persona over Shin Megami Tensei. The only thing I think they keep from Shin Megami Tensei is the difficulty. I'm not gonna lie, then, I still will one day get that game and try it out. Oh, <laughs> uh, if you are gonna play it, be prepared to just, like, save every time you finish a battle. <laughs> because, okay, so to Tokyo Mirage Session is watered down compared to the original Shin Megami, uh, Shin Megami Tensei. But they're basically, like, Dark Souls of RPGs. I sort of so, got that, because I saw, like, a meme... Where it's like, the Matador shows up, it's like, I challenge you, Kai slams door, and he goes, Pixie, go get the buffs! Come on. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, that was... Oh, uh, Shimuga Shimugami Tetsu is great, and that's why I'm kind of getting into it. Like, I, uh, as much as it's illegal, I am trying to torrent some of the older, like, games that were stuck to, like, um, the DS and the P PS2, which... You can't get readily available right now. Yeah, I can't but, wait to yeah. download all the Shin Megami Tensei games onto my Switch, so I don't need to play um, Persona 4 on my computer. Yeah. I mean, uh, enjoying uh, Persona it's... 4, but... Yeah. Yeah, I know. Anyway, we're kind of a little off topic. We're going to start with the news. We're going to do a little something different at this episode, because, again, we're moving from Fridays to Wednesdays. And we didn't have much news this week, We kind so... of. Yeah, like, I kind of figured it out, like, if we leave it till next week, which we were going to do, um, there's just not enough time, we were going to be starved of news regardless of which, when we did it, yeah. so I kind of came up with something on my own, and then Zayn managed to add something to it, so yeah. we'll get into that, but we'll do what news there is, yeah. and we'll, I'll start off with uh, the little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh news, it is very minor, but very awesome. Oh, God. They've Which updated with... Zeroboros, Topologic Zeroboros' effect. Oh, that Have you good. seen that? Oh, yeah, they changed it so you can special summon it during your opponent's standby. Yeah, which is really good. Yeah, that is Because, really like, good. before you would kind of, like, summon Zeroboros, and then when it leaves the field, you kind of open for your opponent to do shit, which is not exactly the best. But here's the thing. But... Do I need to replace my copy yeah. of Zeroboros now? <laughs> No, you'll need an errata, even if it's a picture. Fuck. So. You just need to carry a picture of the errata version. Oh, lovely. That's the ruling. Because, like, it's the same why, like, you can use old cards that still haven't received an updated card yet. Like, you, you just take a picture with you. Fuck. Oh, um, I don't like that already. But yeah, that's, that's fun. I like that. It means more fun th things with Zeroboros can happen. Zeroboros is definitely a good card. <laughs> so what do you think about it? Uh, I don't really care. I looked at the text and went, Ah, okay then. Fair enough. I was more... Con okay, so the reason why I'm sort of like, sitting here like, It's cool! But... We remember how degenerate some of those banished decks can be. Oh god. So, do you think it's going to improve those decks? Mm, I could see it. I could definitely see it. But yet again, because of Zero Boss effect, I think it kind of has to work 
with um, link monsters. Mm. <sighs> okay. But anyway, uh, I guess we got more Phantom Age one-off support cards. Phantom Age is full of one-off support cards, more than usual, and it's weird. Yeah, I think it's kind of the whole, like I said with the other sets, how like they build their main sets, like deck builder sets from the get-go. The whole thing like, hey, we don't have an animator follow, what the fuck are we meant to do? So, I think Konami's just going like, let's just go even the playing field some more. Even yeah, let's just really throw whatever the wall we want, and it, in this case it's a Arcana Force support card. Fuck my life. Oh yeah, I've seen this thing. I'm like, why? Oh, do, I don't even want to talk about effect. It's head's effect, yeah, sure, because you you're going to have to have light value on the field, and that's just a search for a coin toss. And then Grey Artifact gets an extra normal summon, not bad. Hmm. But like, here's the problem with it though, like... It's just too reliant on li either Light Barrier or the coin flipping mechanic. Which is... is bad. Like, yeah, I know that's what... Arcana Force Arcana... in a nutshell. Yeah. <laughs> it's really bad. Like... Someone, because I did see someone else's review of this card, because I was like, ah, I don't know if we'll be talking about it, but I'll want to check out what other people say. And it's like, someone brought up the fact that the world is the only good Arcana Force. Well, it uh, really is. Memes. Exactly. Not even, not even that, because like, you know, skipping a turn is a very powerful effect, but again, it's tied to a shit, like, architect. Oh my god. What were they thinking when they made Arcana Force? I don't it's want to doctrine. even consider that thought process. That's a no. That's a no either. <laughs> like, no, seriously, what possessed them to make this archetype? Like... No, I'm not thinking about it. No, I refuse. I, I refuse. <laughs> I refuse with every single percent of my body. Like, it, I know it's like Scream GX era, but still, even even in GX era, like, you can still see the GX cards, like, crop up every now and then. But no, what what were they smoking? Not, not even just what they were thinking. What were they smoking when they made this archetype? But like, here's the seriously. Thing. But here's the thing, right? Right, hear me out. Uh, Arcana Force, the world, is a fairy. So you can just search yeah. arcane, search f world with arcane reading, and then, I don't know, use Vahara to get it out? Yeah, could do it! But yeah, again, you could just but play Dark quite... Lords and summon Christia, so you know. Yes. Not to mention, like, Vahara needs setup anyway, because you have to control a fairy in the first place. Let alone playing one-off cards to search the world. So, eh. Hmm. Could be worse. Could, yeah, it could be it, worse. I'm... It could be feedback. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I accidentally got rid of feedback. Shit, let me, give me, give me a bit. I accidentally deleted the page. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. There oh, we no. go. There we oh, go. No. Wow. There we found it. It's fine. <sighs> that, that was a good save for you. And then we ruined, and then I ruined it. Yeah, you did, but like, I mean, that you ruined the segue, but it wasn't as bad as it could have been. Like, you could have just outright just made it like awkward, and we couldn't keep talking. But the flow is at least there. Yeah. So anyway, feedback is Phantom Raider's short print meme card, and it, it's yeah. it's not even funny. Like, fighting dirty was funny. Th this yes. is like, uh. Uh, 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 yeah, just like, just permanently cripple yourself, and then be like, <laughs> just permanently cripple I, I, yourself. I, I, listen, I was like, when I think Gilkey brought it up first, was was didn't he? Yeah. Like, when he was talking about, it, I was just like, this card, as much as like it has a really cool effect, it's not gonna be fucking used. Like, <laughs> what do you mean? Just play in monarchs. You don't need that extra deck. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously though, like, you have, it's a trap, one, it's a trap, like, 
There are ways to set traps outside of, like, um, other cards. But, like, you're relying on a non-searchable trap. And then you have to set it, which means you have to have the foresight for your opponent to not just outright pop it before you can fucking use it. It is bad! Yes. Why? <laughs> Why does it exist? We need to this is it. it's not even a meme because it's like like again like you said like the other cards they printed as meme cards were actually fucking funny and did some interesting things that were just memeable but no this does something good but then it's tied to a horrible thing yeah no yeah but his thing his thing, you know you know how you make this good right because this is this is actually sickly monarch support because now you can run Ghost Reaper without clipping yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's this thing. You can just go like, "Yo, I'm yeah, just gonna," right? No, I uh, and you then you're like, "Oh shit, I, I need to activate the mainline. Don't we activate feedback?" Oh yeah, now I can do it. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. By the way, audience, don't fucking do this. Don't be a me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is. It. Oh my god, feedback, what the fuck? he does it, play back feedback, to, back Monarchs, to let's go! <laughs> like, back to what I was saying earlier about our carnivores. What were they smoking when they made this? <laughs> like, it's... <laughs> Konami must be having, like, a stockpile of drugs somewhere that they just take when they don't have card ideas. Mm, yeah, that's, like... what, that's, what, that's what I think at times. <laughs> I, like, I look at news support and I go, hmm. I wonder where the, where the staff the... of drugs for that. <laughs> I wonder if they took LSD or crystal meth. <laughs> like <laughs> oh. <laughs> me, look at the new Gracekeeper support. Man, I wish this was a little bit more bonkers. They should like like they use weed for this one. I think they should have broken out something like the LSD or the crystal meth for this one. How about Fucking... some speed? And then you got trigays like out here, and they're like, "Fuck me!" They just did like they just got like some. I don't know, washing detergent and snort that. Just like... <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> Fuck. This is a great episode. We talked about it killing is... God and, and and demons and extra monarchs. Those are the, like, the three evil, mm. most evilest things you could do in the world. Drugs, extra monarchs, oh. and this. <laughs> it's great. Uh... This is why I said we should do the podcast, because we'll speak up shit on our own. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad, you know, I'm fucking glad. I don't care if this episode's the longest other one. Um, uh, fuck it, uh, no. I guess we could talk about Megatins. We got some more Megatin info. Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, wow, it, it, they've been making a big hullabaloo hull that this is a really big thing, because... Instead of getting one Prismic Secret Rare, two, one Ultra, and one Super Rare, we're getting two Ultra Rares and two Super Rares per pack now. That's actually really good. I'm not gonna lie. It's not a very big difference. And uh, well, what I like is that so far, they only promised like four main sets, but then they say, and more. So they'll pick up one off support from other sets, basically. Yeah. So it's so they're getting the most popular cards from Savage Strike, Dark Neo Storm, Rising Rampage, and Chaos Impact, and more. The question is, what were the most popular cards from these sets? I know Appaloosa was one. Appaloosa, uh, but that's vague. Dolly. Do they want to Dolly. do like two reprints in the same go? That's good point. But still, Star Leech is on the board, because that was an extremely popular card. Star Leech, Star Leech, um, Star Leech, Star Leech. Fuck me, what I know that? I know, I heard it. <laughs> Keep going. It's the it's it's the degenerate, like, dragon that helps um, guard dragons. Still oh, survive, this one! Ugh! 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 I don't know. I didn't really pay attention to those sets, because they didn't have very many cards that I was just like, oh, yeah. Big bucks. Big, big bucks. plays. Yeah. Big dollars. Like, were... I know some people picked up those sets for certain archetypes, but I'm pretty sure those archetypes are just, like, faded out of the meta anyway. So, like, I 
don't know. I am actually just going to go through each set real quick. So let's start with Savage Strike. Uh, Savage Strike straight up has Bowl Savage Dragon. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that thing. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Uh, what else do we have if I sort it by Verities? Ultra Vers first, fine. Uh, we've got Trick Stars, we've got the new TG stuff, Cyverse Quantum Dragon, some Guy Cyrus Dragon Quantum stuff. Might be in there. Um, the Neo support was in this set. Super Anti Kaiju War Machine Mecha, Fun Mecha Thunder King. That's Part of Extravagance. Set. Oh, yeah, okay. We are we just got a reprint for that as well? Yeah, but we also got Sunlight, um, Sunlight Wolf. Yes. That's another one. A bunch of Vockets. I'm pretty sure that's getting a reprint anyway. Oh, that's good then. Uh, a bunch of Vockets stuff. Time Thief stuff was in here. I hope we rarity bump the Time Thief stuff. Yeah, <laughs> but they rarely rarity bump in Megaton. I, I hope. I hope they do. I just want, please, rarity bump it. Um, let's see, next stat set was Dark Neostorm. That one a lot of people picked up. I can't remember why, though. Um, going for the Ultras first, we got... Oh, fuck yeah, Firewall Xe Dragon. I need a copy. Okay. Uh, yeah, you haven't seen the new one. Oh, Digis Digisu was in this set, so this was Orcrust. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is Orcrust. Okay. Mystic Mine! Oh, fuck! <laughs> No wonder they haven't banned it yet. Shit. Cyanite Mining. Okay, that's a good one. I like yeah. Cyanite Mining. And, um, Spooky Ghost Sister was in this one. And Chair Beanie. Yeah, okay. Oh, Chair Beanie. Yep. Okay. Oh, and, 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 the, and the Ib, the Synchro, they got banned. Yes. They probably won't reprint that unless they're planning to bring her back. Which Rising... they should Oh yeah, I opened Rising Rampage. I know most of the chase cards here. Mainly just the Marine set stuff. Mainly. Mainly the Marine set stuff. Um, let's see. Storm Dragon's Return. That, because that one had Starlight Rare for some reason. Yeah, it did too. Da -da -da. Secret Rares. Appalooza. Get Out. I got my copy. Golem. And then we got Gizmak. Um, Serpaton Sky Slasher. That's the one that bashes eight yeah. special. Yep. That's the one. Yeah, this is just mainly Marine set set. Mainly. I, those, I, those are the only cards that really get chased after in Rising Rampage at the moment. Yeah, and then Chaos Impact gave us, yet again, more Marine set stuff. This was wave two Marine sets. Mm. IP. Yeah. Draco Berserker of the 10-year. That's the Synchro. Mm. The really good that one, That is too. a good one. Um, let's see, what else we got? The Super Rares, we got the two EVI support cards. Salmon Great, mm. Pyro Phoenix. I'd never seen a Salmon Great I... play some of that. Uh, yeah, they it's a one-off in Salmon Great decks at the moment. It's really good if you can get it on the board, but it takes it takes a while because Salmon Great is kind of sort of a small deck compared to other meta decks. Mm, I see. Come pay. Yeah, so, like uh, it. Oh yeah, he first. Uh, so like, Salmon Greats is kind of like a resource management deck over like beat down and shit. So like, it takes a while, but if they can get it on the field, it's pretty fucking devastating. Mm. So yeah, yeah. Um, we got first wave unchained in this as well. Ooh, and nice. most of that shit was secret there. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, and we got Firewall Dragon Dark Fluid, which I see no one use or play. I mean, a lot of people picked it up. I'm, I remember that, but like, no one played it because like, its conditions are a little high. Mm. Oh, this was a Remacy as well, but that wasn't such a big thing. No. Yeah, Star Leech was in this set. That's about it. Mm. I'm I'm excited by the prospect of them saying there'll be more. Yeah, like like I said, it's probably just one off. Like they picked out some popular cards from non-main sets and be like, "Hey, we're gonna add these as well because you know, Man. you guys want them." But like, I don't see it adding too much more. Another like, big. They... Oh yeah, you first. Uh, because they uh, 
because like a lot of the cards in there are still really powerful already like the choices they have is pretty good so i don't think we'll see too much like new uh, stuff outside of those four packs okay now I go okay yeah but yeah again yeah, the set also promises three brand new world premiere cards last time they were all three of them were meta defining cards so i'm hoping the same again for this set absolutely and it's also promising us this new stupid dark, um, Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. Yeah, that thing. But I'm glad it's a promo because everyone can pick it up. But also, like, hey, th that thing is a little overpowered. Hmm. Like, especially since you can summon it with Red Eyes Fusion. Like, yeah, you just play three of the Red Eyes Fusion, the Predator Plant engine. And you can shit it out relatively easy. Yeah, I saw people, like, fishing for Red Eyes Fusion. Mm. It was not fun. Um, anyway, uh, like, the only other thing that came attached to this was, uh, Legend... Legendary Duelist, so this is the start of Season 2, I, I would believe. Oh, no, wait, no, because Sister of the Rose wasn't included in Season 1, was it? Sisters of the Rose Season 1. It was in the Season 1 pack, so I think this is we're still halfway through Season 2 then. Yes, we are, because um, this, because remember, Sisters of the Rose was the Harpy one, which Harpies appeared in Season 1. No, Season, no, I so. meant like, as in the... Timeline-wise? Uh, yeah, timeline-wise. No, not timeline-wise, because, uh, no, I was talking about the actual pack Season 1. Oh. Harpies weren't in the pack for season one, so I think we're in season two of Legendary Legendary Duelist now. No, we are much further than that because the first Legendary Duelist set was Le um, White Dragon Abyss, I'm pretty sure, which was Blue Eyes and Black Rose, um, not Black Rose, Black Wing stuff. But like I'm pretty sure we are far ahead of that. But that wasn't in se the season one pack. You know what? This is confusing. Fuck it. All you need to know is that Rage of Ra, the next one, has the mech support. It has Desperova support. And I can't remember the other support it's supposed to have. Uh, that's a good point. Let me have a look. So we had Wing Dragon Ra. We had Jinzo. Yeah. It, it, legit, it's just mech on the pack. So you won't even know this has Desperova support. No. Uh, mech Lords, there it is. What? Oh, Mech Lords, yeah. Mech Lords. <laughs> Sorry, I just had yeah. like. Back and forth. Like, everyone forgets Mech Lords because of this. You know what? No, I want to talk about this because I just finished the 5Ds um, campaign and I, I fought Zone and went, what the? Who is this man in the iron casket? Oh, so you, oh yeah, because you didn't watch the anime. So, Zone is some dude from the future who had surgery to look like Yusei because everyone remembered Yusei in the future as a hero. So, he was so trying he's to, he not the Yusei old man that became too. a centaur. What? Because I remember seeing a picture of an old man who who started running and he looks like a centaur. Oh, that's what, that was one of the robo dudes who becomes a polio at the end. Before you no, uh, you know, you know, you know. Don't, don't explain it to me. I don't want to. I don't want to think about this anymore. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll just explain Zone because he has nothing to do with that dude. Okay, good. Because <laughs> so Zone, Zone basically had surgery to look like Yusei because Yusei provided hope for everyone because he was hailed as a hero, but that didn't quite fucking happen. Basically, shit just got worse, and so he's gone back in time basically to kill Yusei. <laughs> Because, yeah, he can't live with his mistakes. Okay, well, anyway, yeah. moving on. Um, the OTS <laughs> Torment Pack 13 Portuguese Editions. I felt like this was worth talking about. I, I don't know. I, yeah, I, it, could, it could be very close to what we're going to get. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, Stealth Void, it has um, um, Line and Dark Charmer reprints. It has a bunch of Malefic reprints, which I'm really happy. It has a fucking Karakuri reprint, which I'm confused about. And it has a Charmer Country reprint. 
Why? Well, welcome to Why though? Why? <laughs> what is their matter? What cards made it to Portuguese and didn't? How far <laughs> behind are they? What? This doesn't make sense. Yeah, at the moment, these are all the commons, so. Oh. That still doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's fine. The commons are usually not yeah, the cards anyway. It's a super and ultra that's... that I met off. <laughs> yeah, that's a fair point. Okay. <laughs> God. This is confusing. I'm sorry, it's still confusing me. <sighs> anyway, that's uh, that's the Yu-Gi-Oh news. I guess we have to talk about the direct now. I I have a someone who summed it up for me, all nice and tight for me. So, uh, Candidates of Hyrule is um, coming out of all its DLC as a physical copy. That's yep. uh, that's I, that's supposed to be like a Nintendo spin-off of oh, fucking. I have it, Crypt of the Necro Dancer. I have it downloaded. Yeah. It's actually quite fun. I just I can't get used to the rhythm yet. That's fair enough. Um, why is it being printed as a hard copy? Uh, I don't know, but it's coming with all the DLC. It was pretty popular because it played like it pretty much played like a normal Legend of Zelda game, like a normal T two D top. Yeah, yeah, one. I know, I know, I know the premise of it. It's just I'm just confused about the fact that it's on. Is it only coming out in hard copy? Oh uh, no! It already has a digital. It was only digital before. It's getting oh, a okay. hard run now with all the DLC included. Yeah. Okay, uh, okay, we'll just talk about Shin Megami's later. Fuck it. Um, Rogue Company on Switch. I do not know what Rogue Company is. I'm not hundred percent sure. I know it's a sort of an underpopular franchise. It's not like popular Rogue or anything, Company. but like there's some people who really like it. I've never played any of the other games, so... Okay, Rogue no Company idea. is an upcoming multiplayer third-person shooter. Oh, uh, yeah, there we oh, go. Oh, fuck off! It's published by hi Nope, 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 nope. I'm boarding. <laughs> I'm boarding. <laughs> Abort! Abort! <laughs> okay, yeah. You know what hi is known for? Yes. Paladins. Mm-hmm. We all know how shitty Paladins is. It's so just a rip-off of Overwatch, and we all know it. <laughs> it. It wanted to be the free-to-play alternative to Overwatch, but then it just got worse and worse. And I used to play their MOBA spin-off, um, Smite, because I found Smite to be a very introductory, like, a very fun introduction to MOBAs, and then it just, like, it just got slowly worse. Like, first it was the bad I mean, parts. I, I, uh, I'll say something good about Smite. Is yeah. that it doesn't just immediately rip off every other mobile. Exactly, I, that's what I like right. about it. It was, it still Paladins, was unique, but then you know, if it added the battle pass, mm. and then they started adding a f like c people that weren't even like mythologies, they're like legends, like they added fucking King Arthur and Merlin, and I just went, this is not, no, not no. I mean, when you start running out of ideas for characters, then I guess... The final sense. nail in the coffin for me was when they added ruby skins. Oh, yeah, that's bad. No, nothing wrong with ruby, but all those other people who actually like that show. But, like, there are a lot of just shit that goes on with that. And they like, just recently added Cthulhu as a god. No, nah, okay, that's 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 crossing the line. And, and for the new battle pass, they are including... Legend, Legend of the Avatar skins. Oh, Avatar! Oh my really? god, I need to bring this up now, so you know, just so you can try to fit the the Avatar character to that um to that god. So I okay. So adding Aang, Zuko, and Korra as skins. Yes. Okay, so Zuko is Suzano. That makes a little bit of sense. Okay, I never watched the um, show, by the way. I think I've seen bits of it, so just just for context. Yeah, so well, Susano, Susano has, like, like sort of fire-based stuff, so... Uh, he, no, he's supposed to be the god of storm, so yeah. Any, anyway... But like, no, he, has, he does have minor fire powers, if I remember correct from the mythology. He does have minor fire powers. Uh, but he doesn't that's... have it in the game, that's the thing. Oh, okay. Uh, 
But it's not, I like, it's not a whole, like, it's not a horrible, like, oh yeah, we're just gonna slap this over, like, because in the mythology you did have some sort of firepower, so that's kind of excusable. Okay, so Korra is Scotty. Scotty's giving Wait, adding Korra, his... hey, 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 hang on, hang on. They're adding Korra in there. Yes. Oh, this is worse than I thought. <laughs> The adding Cora as Scotty. Scotty's gimmick is the fact her kit is kind of based around the fact she has this the, her dog that follows her around. So they're making the dog her polar pet polar bear dog Naga. Yes. Okay, and, that was and thing. you want to hear who gets Ang? Who? Merlin. Why? I don't want to talk about it. Why? That doesn't make sense. Okay, I know Marilyn's a very powerful wizard and all, and like he, he has lots of different abilities and stuff and shit like that. But like, there has to be someone better to put Ang over. Yeah, there has to be, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, we're also getting WWE 2K Battlegrounds on Switch. Reminder that the last WWE um 2K port. Was absolutely fucking dog shit in a disgrace. Mm hmm. But um, I have seen WWE um, 2K Battleground footage and it was kind of fucking funny. Like, I saw, like, I, I think I saw someone throw another wrestler into, like, an alligator. Okay. Oh, I'm yeah, looking at the art it's, now. It, they're, they're, like, the. They're focused more on the nonsensical side of WWE because, like, they have their whole lore and shit, and it's fuck. It's weird for because one, they are actual people rather than like fictional characters, but they have their own whole fucking lore and shit, and it's like what the. Well, fuck? to begin with, these like, models are fucking ugly. <laughs> oh no, they are definitely disgusting. Why? <laughs> like it does. It doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter which game it is. All of WWE 2K games are fucking ugly looking. It doesn't matter what period you plug place them, they just look bad. Move on. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Okay, okay, well, we can talk about Shin Megami Tensei. Um, first yeah. things first, Shin Megami Tensei 5 it has been confirmed to not be paperware, it's coming out next year. <laughs> yes. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, that's what they said when t they were planning to do Tokyo Mirage Session. So, will it be a bait and switch? Probably. <laughs> yeah. And we're also getting Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne HD Remaster in spring of next year. Which is definitely something I'm looking forward to. And I've been I loving seeing the memes for this. Like, I need to go find these fucking memes again. It's so good. I'll send them to you <laughs> as I find them. So you can keep talking about it. Yeah, so, like, should. Okay, so for those who don't know Shin Megami Tensei, I know a lot of people know it by now because, you know, it has been uh, popularized of recent because of its counterpart, Persona, which uh, we can all complain about Persona versus Shin Megami, Shin Megami Tensei the whole time. But basically, Shin Megami Tensei is set in a post-apocalyptic environment, except to Tokyo Mirage Session, where you... Um, gain powers from demons to go fight generally gods or some entity similar to a god, unlike Tokyo Mirage Session. Um, can I? St I'm just gonna stop like talking about Tokyo Mirage Session and how bad it is in comparison to other Shin Megami Tensei. This first meme <laughs> in Persona, you team up with a group of friends to save the world. In SMT, you team up with a group of demons to kill your friends and the world. <laughs> That's a pretty good one. Wait, is that a Nocturne remasters? You ain't getting in. <laughs> oh yeah, because apparently the original Nocturne had a version of Dante in it. I'm like, what? This sounds like bonkers. Yeah, no, they had they had they had a version of Dante in it. It was it was like when people saw it, well, they thought it was cool originally, but it's just a fucking meme now because like every time you bring up like the Dante exists in Shin Megami Tensei, everyone just fucking. <laughs> now including Dante from the Devil May Cry series. I don't, like, okay. So, I think it was like just a one-off promotional thing they did. 
But like, it's I think it's I haven't double checked this, but I think it's canon that like there's a version of Dante and Shin Megami Tensei now. Oh, you thought you'd never see me, me again, didn't you? I don't think you did. <laughs> I'm not linking these memes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cell with Shimigami Tensei over the pub. <laughs> Not at all. I challenge you to a duel. Slab. Fixie, get the, <laughs> Fixie, the, get buff. the buffs. <laughs> I love that. Well, Matador is actually really hard to fight, so I do understand. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, I forgot. Cute. I forgot. People got really salty about this. Are we, are we talking about the Tokyo Mirage session? We're talking That's about true. this whole direct that happened. Because the Nintendo oh, fans oh, were like, there's nothing here that we want. It's just Shin Megami Tensei shit. We better downvote it. Like, they hate the direct. Like, the direct has 29k people who liked it. 28. 2,800 of people who didn't like it. According to the YouTube oh. um, dislike. Like to dislike ratio here's the thing the reason why is because like it, there's a bunch of shit that nintendo is holding off on like they te it okay nintendo's put themselves in this really weird position where they've teased so much shit that everyone is wanting to know more regardless of the situation and they're starting to get fed up of not having that information well it's not like, ready yet is it <laughs> They're gonna have to put out. Well, that's it. Yeah, yeah, but like, look at the things that they've um teased. Breath of the Wild two. Um, what else have they teased? They've teased. There's a bunch of shit. But the point is that, like, Nintendo is not exactly doing the best. I mean, those who did this, as Ethan will explain, because I just sent it to him. Oh, is this the dislike thing? Nope. Oh, these are these yeah. are the user review score. They review bombed every single Shin Megami Tensei game, except really? Persona wow. One. Wow! Except Persona One, because they was too stupid to think. Oh yeah, because Persona One was classified as Shin Megami Tensei Persona. They didn't get that one. <laughs> no. Okay, so they. Listen, Shin Megami Tensei is a great game series. I do, I do understand that it's not everyone's cup of tea, but don't go ruining everyone else's, like, games. Exactly. This is why I hate... I don't fucking... like how review bombing is now an acceptable form of criticism. It's cancel culture, man. It's cancel culture. People just... Because they want some, what they want, they are going to... Basically, complain at everyone and anything until they get what they want. And you know what that means? You watch. All these great franchises will be review bombed as soon as they get revealed because until the fans of Nintendo, because, okay, fans of Nintendo have already been pretty ravenous with different, when it comes to different games anyway. Like, have you seen, like, this, like, ratio of the last few directs? They've all been pretty fucking high compared to Nintendo standards. And yeah. it's because people are sick of, get, like, having... They're basically sick of having stuff teased. And then Nintendo not turning around and saying anything about it for months on end. Because, like, we got through, basically... The, I think we got teased for Breath of the Wild 2, like, a year ago now. Hmm. Like, I do understand why people are getting impatient. Because, like... If you tease something, you have to be, like, midway through development, right? Yeah. Like, you don't just chuck out a tease because, like, tease and because it might fail. And I think there was something that kept coming up with um, Shin Megami Tensei 5. I know it happened with Persona as well. Like, they teased Persona 5, like, for like a good like 12 years i'm pretty sure like it took them a while to make that game so i get why our, our, um atlas is milking it at the moment because like the company is not exactly in the best position because like they keep trying to make stuff 
and then it just not working out. And with ravenous fans who have been teased, go out of their way to make things worse. So, yeah, it's a bit of a problem. But it's their own problem. So, yes. Oh, hang on. I, is that the end for the news, though? Yep. I, I don't really have anything else on to bring up. I'll just we'll pause the recording just for a moment. Oh, okay. Then I'll. Yep. Yep. That that's the end of the news. Yep. We just had a random cut there. I'm not going to explain it. Let's move on. Okay. Oh, uh, so, yeah, review. Get out. My review first. Uh, okay. So I'm doing a double review. Two different card games. Now we mentioned this first card game on the podcast before. Oh, uh, Xenozard, was... great. No. <laughs> so now that I've been able to play it enough to get to silver rank, and I'm almost at gold rank, I can now officially say, like, review the whole of the game because, you know. You gotta wait till later levels to get to the midpoint, which you can say, "Oh, this is the whole game for the rest of the game." So, it's good. Like now, now that I'm almost teetering on gold edge, like getting into the more competitive tiers, it's good. Like the gameplay does not stagger. Like it's not boring. It's not repetitive, and I like that. Also, I finally figured out. You know um, how they have the sync, the synchronicity with different factions. Hmm. Dan. Yeah. Hello. Hello. I was asking you a question. Oh, I wasn't paying attention. I was reading. Oh yes. Okay. So <laughs> you know the synchronicity, right? For yeah. the um, regions. Yeah. I finally kneel it. I haven't got it to max, but I got it to halfway. Okay. And the AI's attitudes change. Oh. They actually change. Ooh. Now, so, you know, I had one to call the big fluffy bunny. Yeah. He yells at me every time I open the app. Because <laughs> like, uh, uh. I just stuck with red. Because <laughs> I stuck with red, he. As soon as I open the. The app, it's like, where were you? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> went from this, like, oh, come enjoy Wonder, wonder Call Land or whatever. And then now it's like, where have you been? <laughs> like, it's like, whoa, tone shift there. And it's the same with, you know, the, so there is an interactive part where you interact with the AI. It has changed from, do you like my fluffy belly to, don't touch me. <laughs> takes a the whole okay so now, now that i got that out of the way overall this this game is really fantastic the mechanics work and here's the best bit they actually experiment with the thing so how there are three pack types in the game we have the core packs which are the main set and the ones you you as the player will generally buy if you're a new player like because they have more solid strategy then we have the promotional pack well not promotional what are they called Special packs, whatever. They're generally just reprints. So if you want to pick up some good cards real quick, go get those. Hmm. Then we have the extra packs, which are basically uh, game testing gimmicks, mm -hmm. which is actually very interesting. And we've seen it, a successful release of some of those gimmicks. For example, the boost gimmick. They tested it out in Revenant of the Sword and released it in Pack Code 4, um, Forbidden. So there's that. And I wanted to, and the reason why I kept off the review, total review, I know this is a very short review, but like it's because I wanted to see what late game play is like. A lot of mobile games start out being really great in the early run, and then mid game they stagger. But Xenonzard does not stagger. The events keep thing in things fresh, the ranked matches are balanced, even at later levels. Um, overall, this game is managed beautifully. The one thing that isn't managed good, though, is in-game currency. And that's because it's a mobile game, right? We, we all know this. So if you ignore... But you can ignore um, in-app purchases because the game 
reward you for actually playing the game, rather than other ones where it's like, oh, you hit this milestone. Here's a reward. So, like, if... I'm going to use the basic score meter for this. And I say this game... Keeping in mind, this is a mobile game. I'll give it an 8.5 out of 10. Okay. Well, like, I, I was about to say... Game play doesn't stagger. Yeah, hmm? you can vote. You can go in. No, 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 you go. No, you wanted to cut Okay, me. because I was about to say my thing of, I haven't played this game since we talked about it. No, you haven't, I know that. <laughs> Again, I gave it a, I gave it a fair shot, man. And it's, to be fair, I just get bored of um, digital card games pretty fast, because it's just, I don't know, it doesn't feel as satisfying. But yeah, to be no, fair, I after you told me, well. like, because like, I was wondering, what is this, like, these color bars supposed to do? I just noticed my white yeah. bar is actually kind of getting higher. So I'm like, oh mm. shit, there's actually something to this. Yeah, no, and I'm also like into this, but I finally finished the first chapter of the AI story as well. Mm -hmm. Like, just through playing. And that, I mean, I have I can't say too much about the story, because the story is kind of hard to like get into the next chapters, because mm. it's just playing the game. You get the chapters unlocked, and then you watch basically uh, visual novel style cutscene. Not the worst way to tell the story, though. But, I do like that out of the two characters I've played with, both of them added to the world building of the the series. Like, they explain things, they... Because, like, when I originally played it, my first time when I was playing with um, the suit designer, mm. it I never mentioned... I never realized how the AI and the human were interacting face to face hmm. because I, I always assumed oh hey he must have a robot body no the whole time in the the whole time we are logged into a VR world basically and I was like hang on this explains some of the stuff from the anime which is ongoing hmm. so like everything's sort of building off each other which is a good thing but I can't say too much about the story um so yeah. Okay. Any thoughts you want to add there? Not really. It's just I I haven't really played the game that much, so I don't really have much to add to it. Hmm. In fact, I'm playing yeah. it right now. Now, so so thanks. Oh, for fuck's sake, Brett. <laughs> okay. So now. So yeah, what's well, so the other one you want? You you say you want to talk about another card game. Even? Oh shit, did he drop? Even, I can't hear you. Even, you're talking, but uh, uh, we can't hear you. You're gonna have to come back and rejoin. Fuck, I'm gonna have to type to him now. I swear this happens every time! Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> Do I have to direct message him? I'm gonna have to direct message him. Yeah, I got no sound. Fuck. <laughs> Maybe you see that and we join and rejoin. <sighs> yep, there, he's back. Still oh. can't hear him. Yep, can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you now. Okay, what were you, what were you you're gonna have to recap what you're saying because you're the, the that 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 whole like one minute has nothing at all now. <laughs> okay, so back I was talking about the Bakugan TCG. Okay. <laughs> oh fuck me. <laughs> so let's start off with the bigger disc. Life decking. Your deck is your life. I hate this one because you don't get to play your cards. I know there's mill mill strategies, but like also like. You can circumvent those strategies in other card games, but if that's the whole point of the game, you can't play your cards. Um, one. Uh, so, the game plays out pretty standardly. They're pretty quick. It's, from what I can tell, pretty fun as far as people who have actually played it go on. Um, it 
it's a lot like the original Bakugan, except with a 40 card deck, is what I've basically seen. Um, which is not too bad, because, like, we all like back. We, like, I played Bakugan, the original, back in the thing. The reason why I was holding off on playing it was I was going to see how the market developed. And boy, it did not go smoothly. I would presume so. so. <laughs> let's start off with let's start off by going through products one by one, and I'll, and I'll let you guess what the problem is. So, okay. here's the basic starter set: comes with forty cards, three back gone, three character cards, and six cores. Basically, all you need to play, right? Mm -hmm. So, what's the problem? What do you think the problem is, Ian? <sighs> They're short printed. Yeah. You cannot buy them now. At all. Shit. And it doesn't stop there. So, because it's tied to an hour physical card game, you'd think, oh, hey, they would sell boxes, right? Yeah. Online. The one place that does sell it, there is no stock. That's correct. Out of the two boxes that have been sent, like, had been printed, both of them unavailable. And I'm not done. Oh no. Now, there are, like, a smaller set with basically just three packs and two cores, right? Can you get those? No. <laughs> no. You see, the biggest problem with a Vacagon TCG is you can't get access to the older cards. <sighs> and this shows as if you go on to even just buying singles, you can't buy the necessary singles to play a certain faction. Yeah. Meaning, you can't play the game. This is why I was holding out on it, because Bakugan has never been handled very well when it comes to product release. The only time it has been handled well well is when it's releasing big gimmicky stuff like Maximus Dragonoid, <laughs> Dragonoid Colossus, Dragonoid Destroyer, the big milestone Christmas things that release every so often. So, this is like, I know it's unjustified to like sort of review a card game based on its market, but like it's an inclusive card game. But if you, if you jumped the bandwagon at the start of the whole Bakugan thing, you're fine. You can play. But if you didn't, fuck it. So, my question here is, how is Spin Master gonna um, get new players invested? Yep. I'm, I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting for this part. God, Doss. <laughs> They're not. Fuck! <laughs> the, the TCG is done. The fact that it survived more than three years, and no, more than two years, has already been a miracle. Because as we all know, card games are plagued by the thing called the two-year rule. Most of them only last two years. The fact that it's managed to keep up to a third year has been a miracle at all. And I'll let you know, it's not gonna continue. Like, a lot of you look online, and a lot of people who have been on board with the reboot are starting to sort of shift their focus. Because a lot of them realize that, guess what? TCG isn't going to continue. Sure, kids are going to buy the back of gone, but if you go into normally a lot of supermarkets, you can see a lot of stock for them. Hmm. Which means kids aren't buying them. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, why do I leave this? Don't play Bakugan. You cannot play competitively, one. It's about to die. This Probably the end of this year, or maybe early next year. Um, mm. And that's all I have to really say about the Bakugan TCG. Mm. Because it's worse than the original Bakugan game. Like, product play, like product wise. Mm. Like, we could still play a game by playing one of the starter sets in Bakugan. Which, they made new ones each season. 
They didn't this time. Don't know why, but they didn't. So, if you're thinking about playing the Vagon TCG, don't play it. It's already dead in the water. <sighs> I think it's your time time to sh uh, shine, Zane, with your review. <laughs> Oh, well, Whatever. it's more of it's more of a recommendation because I mean, rereading this series. Uh, it's called Fourteen. Have you ever heard of this series? I think so. I it's been it's I a horror sci-fi manga, and I recently started reading it because uh, two guys I know we've been like getting really into like talking about like horror and all that recently and I'm and I, I just remembered oh shit I had it super really best shit I just spit a bit <laughs> um, I had yeah I know it's weird I, I, I'm being eating chocolate so I'm watering literally okay. but no uh, 14 the best way of this describe it is just read the first three chapters. If, it, if you're not sold on it, I don't blame you. Because our main protagonist, his name is Chicken George. He's a chicken. No. No, 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 no. It's worse. He's he's a oh. mutated chicken nugget. Why? He's a mutated chicken Why? nugget who came from a mass cloning factory of genetic engineering, where the genetically engineered chicken nuggets. For what purpose? Because this is 2,200. The world is fucked, my friend. <laughs> I still don't think you'd have to... Wait, so they're pumping out chicken nuggets. They're not pumping out chickens to make the nuggets. No, they're doing it... They're just skipping all the other steps. Yes, and... because... I believe for the like you you have to really read all two hundred and sixty chapters of the series to understand it. But to sum it up, pretty much Chicken George is brought back. He's pretty much becomes the messenger of nature, right? And then he he's pretty much he's like I need to save the earth effectively and. The whole manga it might as well just be summed up as this massive, like, because it was made in 1980s, 1990s. It's just a massive fucking, we need to stop doing what we're doing. So we need to stop fucking up the earth. And the author is like, I think the best way to do this is we just scare the shit out of people. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I'll send you some, like, just weird panels. I like I'll send you like a panel that just sums up like chapter two of the manga and it just it's it's weird. I'll I'll get some more panels, but the keep going on explaining. Um, pretty much. Uh, it's really weird because after Chicken George finally realizes his purpose in life and he frees a bunch of weirdly genetic animals at a zoo. It cuts to the President of America and he's giving a speech which pretty much just sums up the world's condition at that point. And he goes back because his wife is pregnant and all that. And then suddenly, green babies are being born. What? Yeah. And then there's this, even his baby, his baby has ends up having green hair. And people think, oh shit, it's a disease, and then it leads to a riot, and then he, and then the president, he actually slowly realizes that one, they're still humans, we can't treat them like shit. And two, uh, for his kid, the green hair, is actually plant material. It's made of the same stuff plants is made of. Ooh. And then, do you know what he decides to call his kid? America. His kid is called America. That is the most American thing to do. <laughs> and then he realizes that his kid is only at peace with other plants because he's he's crying, he's crying. And then the, the 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 first lady's brother visits with his kids. They give the kid 
a cactus, and then and America is just like happy now. He, he's okay. he's at peace with plants, and but it's it's so weird. I because I'm rereading it to piece my memory back together. And another thing I remember is at some point, Chicken George somehow builds a giant rocket ship shaped like a T-Rex. And then, for some reason, he has, like, genetic copies of every other single animal, where it's one male, one female. So we get into Noah Ark symbolism here as well. Okay. And somehow, America becomes, like, a child Jesus-like messiah figure. And, oh, it's weird. And then the final chapter, like, America comes out, finds out Earth has been taken over by... Virgins of Chicken George is the best way to put it. Because at this point, I think Chicken George is supposed to be dead. And then, for some reason, he leads his kids and they all jump back into a bug. And then... It's a weird, weird series. And it's... <sighs> yeah, it sounds weird. But I heavily recommend this series because it is genuinely terrifying at times. Because for me, like, again, horror is subjective. We all get scared by different shit. For me... Anything that involves, like, the government or the future is scary. Because mm. it's not completely out of the realm of fiction. This could possibly happen in our lifetime. Like, we possibly could fuck up the Earth to the point something like this might happen. Like, we're genetically producing food like this, and I genuinely find it terrifying. The, the manga is an absolute fucking mindfuck, but I seriously recommend reading it if you're into horror. Fair enough. And then, oh god, I guess I have one more horror recommendation. Uh, Starving Anonymous. Hmm. Um, you probably never heard of this series as well, because you're not no, such a big manga buff as I am. Um, Starving Anonymous is no, like... I mean, I mean, re oh, sorry. Yeah. I only recently, I've been reading a lot more manga recently. So. Yeah, I don't, yeah, that's good. Well, we'll, we should talk about what you've been reading afterwards then. But, um, Starving Anonymous is like, you know the whole concept behind Soul and Green? That, you know, Soul and Green, spoilers, is people. It's not really a spoiler, it's yeah. a stereotype. Starving Anonymous is that, but they take it a lot further. Like, enough. Like, a big point of it is like, they kidnap people at random. And then they kind of breed humans into, like, they're pigs. Like, they feed them liquid that makes them fat and stupid, like pigs. And then they harvest them for their meat. And then it kind of gets weirder and darker from there. Like, there's all of a sudden cloning experiments. There's suddenly alien lotus overlords. And then... It, it's a weird, weird series, and it terrifies me, because it's like, shit, this could be our life right now. We could just be eating, like, beef, but it's actually just humans, but we don't know. Like, because, yeah, yeah, the government, it's so easy to cover misinformation. Like, you could just, it's so easy to spread misinformation, so that's why I think, the, this could just be, like, the government covering up shit. <laughs> For me, it's the lack of information that makes shit scary. Things you can't explain is scary, and you can't really explain the government at times. And that's why I found 14 and Starving Anonymous terrifying as concepts. That's fair enough. But, yeah, again, uh, you know, what scares you, Ethan? I want to carry on with this conversation. Hmm. That's a good question. Like, for me, spiders are terrifying, but that's, uh, that's obvious. Oh, yeah, spider spiders can, like... I'm not as scared of spiders as I used to be, but like sometimes when I see bigger spiders, I'm like, yeah, please. Yeah, there's two <laughs> kinds of Australians. There's there's the Australians that are scared shitless by spiders because it's Australian, they're gonna kill you. And then there's the Australians that are not scared of spiders because oh, it's spiders, we live in Australia. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I kind of sit, I kind of sit in between of that spectrum. Yeah, that's the one I find terrifying. Suffocation. <laughs> that that stuff terrifies me. Just suffocating at all. Like lack of oxygen, drowning, that sort of stuff just terrifies me. Mm. Same. 
Yeah? Oh, yeah, fucking... Uh, sorry, I'm just reading War 14, because it's just getting weirder by the second. Like, the, <laughs> the president is, like, now trying to be, like, a scientist guy, and he's trying to think, and then... What the fuck? Why is this chicken talking? <laughs> I don't it's remember any of this. Like... Fuck. God, this... That's been a long time. Long time ago. Yeah, a chicken is talking to a drowning man, and, he's, and the chicken is saying, You gotta drown! You gotta drown! Oh, the man didn't drown. Chicken disappeared. Fuck, you know what? Let's just move on. I'm done. I'm done. I don't, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> well, oh, shit. Now he's found a secret <laughs> laboratory with the chicken. And he's chasing after the chicken with a knife. And now there's a horse. And he's found Chicken George. Okay, you know, I'm, let's put that away for now. Stop. Yeah, yeah. Let's just... <sighs> so, <laughs> the, 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 okay, well, let's talk about mangas we've been recently reading, I guess. Uh... Yes, I have a lot of... A lot of my manga I've been reading has been ongoing, so there's not a lot of stuff that I have completed. Unless it's JoJo, because I'm up to date with that. Yeah. So I've read all of part um, eight, 7. I just caught really. up on One Piece, and the newest chapter, the journey had something I didn't even see fucking coming. I mean, I could have said that last week, for last week's chapter, but this week's chapter was even weirder. Because... Yeah. Okay, so... I'm um, not really spoiling shit here because I don't think it's that major. Um, we get to meet Kaido's son, but yeah, but it's son in quotation marks. Huh? The best way to put it is Kaido's son is actually a daughter. Oh, there we go. Crap. No, no, she, she, she's, he's actually a female. He has tits and everything. Right. Oh, okay. So it's not, it's not a trap situation. It's just some it's people think genuine. it's trans. Ah. Uh... Because you know, yeah, again, we it's easy to establish. Because yet again, come on, we fucking mm. we have um imperial imper I can never pronounce his name. We have Ivor. We have Ivor. Yeah. You've seen Ivor. That thing is terrifying. <laughs> That's fair. But anyway, um. But no, there is a genuine, like, fucking just, boom. I don't want to spoil it. Yeah. Uh, it, it's honest, it's honestly something, like, it's a thing you wouldn't expect, kind of like in the other major arc. Um, the main Ford arc. The cl conclusion to that, it's mm. like that, if you get what I'm getting at. I'm I said, not, this I isn't as drawn out. Worry. This is like, you blink and you miss it. Ah, gotcha. And it's such a major character to the arc, is that what got me? Fair enough. Because they were kind of setting up this guy as the villain. Ah. Uh... Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll let you read one arc if you ever feel like getting around to One Piece. But... Uh, maybe. Well, I mean, I've been thinking about it because I know the manga is a lot more easier to get into than it is the anime, which has, like... <laughs> Lots a bunch of episodes and like sitting down to catch up is just a chore. So, yeah, if you want to catch yeah. up, you have to read the manga. I watching the anime will literally take you years <laughs> to I catch know. up. That's, that's why I'm like dreading it. Like, because like this is why I never got into One Piece in the first place. Like, yeah, I've read a few of like a few pages of uh, the manga because I knew someone who read it quite frequently. That but, would be me. Like. No. No. Oh. It was Jared's brother. I guess I never really yeah, was that open was... about me talking about this. No, you weren't at the we weren't at the start, but like towards the end of the the our experiences. You were like, Yeah, mango. Yeah, mango's a thing. Um Um What have I been reading recently? Well I watched you can you remember Sethra of the End? Uh, I think uh, of it old the and first three the chapters of it, and I wasn't really sold on it. Yeah, it was like apocalyptic, like vampires taking over. Yeah, and over. then I kind of just stopped because I went. Uh... So I, I I read it because I was like, I watched all of the anime, which is I'm not gonna lie, it's easier to watch the anime when it comes to the start of the story 
than it is to read the manga. But, like, some of the later events of, like, season two are better in the manga. But, yeah. That's the point. I wanted to read past the season two. Because I was like, uh, I'm not I'm not a big fan of uh, Sephiroth at the end. But, I still don't like watching stuff and not knowing the conclusion. Because <laughs> that always annoys me. Because, you know, cliffhangers. Yeah. So, I ref- read... I'm up to date now with it, because it's still going on, mm-hmm. somehow. <laughs> somehow. Um, somehow. So, that's one of the things I've been reading recently. Um, ooh, what did I just finish? Can't remember, but I finished something recently. Can't remember what it was. Oh, yeah. I got up to date with Chainsaw Man. Oh, my friend's been one. talking about this as well. Oh, we have to talk about this his previous work now because I, you know, get your thoughts about Chainsaw Man. This is gonna be a long fucking discussion I'm about to enter. Uh oh, <laughs> all I've read is Chainsaw Man. Okay. Okay. Um... What you you done talking about Chainsaw Man already? Oh god, that was quick. I mean, I was gonna men- mention like the fights are really cool like they're not they're not like your normal conventional fights and I like it mm. so that's about it yeah alright so okay so his previous work is a, a, a it was a manga called Fire Punch have you ever heard of Fire Punch I have heard of it but never actually read or seen any of it okay I'm legitimately about to send you a picture of the only good thing to come from this manga. It's a okay. meme. And it's the G, the best thing I ever seen. <laughs> uh, I'm sending it to you now. There you go. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> My best <laughs> described it as it's the G, the condensed version of of Weird Champ. <laughs> I'm just like, that is so perfect. <laughs> But yeah, wow. uh, that's the best way to sum up this series. It was Fire Punch. Okay. Yeah, Fire Punch was Chainsaw Man's author's previous work, and I hate it because it was so fucking pretentious. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. I've never read it, so I can't say anything. Okay. Uh, a big point of Fire Punch is um, so. A whole thing about Fire Punch is uh, it's a post apocalyptic world where the f- world has frozen over. The main character here, that's Agni, and his sister both have mutant powers where they have hyper regeneration. Okay. I think either his. I can't remember. I've, I've reread the end to gather my thoughts on it again, and I've seen a couple of chapters. I can't remember the beginning. Um, pretty much. His sister is really into, like, movies. And a big point of it is, like, Star Wars for some reason. Like, she was like, oh, man, imagine if we lived in a world where we saw the peak of Star Wars. I'm like, oh, God, this person, this is... For context, this was written before we got the new trilogy. So we had the prequels. And I'm like, this woman has not seen the prequels. She does not... What? (laughs) This woman... But that, anyway, I think I think his sister gets murdered or kidnapped at some point, and he gets set on fire by someone. This fire is unique because the fire doesn't go out until that person dies. But he he has hyper regeneration. You do the maths. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, he's a forever on fucking fire. The poor sad <laughs> sod. <Thank you. laughs> um. But then he goes like, I have a burning vengeance now. Ah! And then I from see. there, it fucking degenerates into the most pretentious bullshit you could think of. Got it. So, like, it has actual, like, people praising Agni as, like, this fucking godlike figure. Yeah, okay, I see where you're going on this. But the ending, I do not mind spoiling the ending, just because it will save people from fucking reading it. The ending is what really pissed me off. And when I went straight into Chainsaw Man, I just couldn't 
re Chainsaw Man because I was just so pissed. <sighs> so, because oh. I just went, this author is just so fucking far up his, his own ass. The ending is he gets amnesia. He then, he then, he then meets up with this woman that reminds him of his sister. It's not his actual sister. He then, he then, um, he then, something happens, he gets his memories back, he sets himself on fire again. He goes to this yeah. village, he beats up this guy, who had thunder powers for some reason. Then his sister shows up, sister is like, yo, kisses him, so yeah, there's incest. Like, and then, and then she, he tell, she tells Adney to live, and then suddenly his body blows up. He comes out of his old body in his new body, not on fire. And then his sister turns into a tree. Oh god, I don't okay, like how no, you go on silent. Oh, there we go. No, 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 no. Okay, then 80 years passed, suddenly. And oh, then it's like, oh, the world hasn't frozen over. If, it, if your sister didn't turn into a tree for some fucking reason, you know, we wouldn't be living right now. We have civilization. And, you know, because he has hyper regeneration, he's effectively fucking ageless and immortal. A guy gives him a tablet, and he's like, here, you can use this to commit suicide if you want. What? And then, I don't know if he actually commits suicide, or then he climbs up the big fucking tree, I think. That's what I think is supposed to be the thing. He climbs up the big fucking tree, he's naked for some reason. And then he's like, his sister is just hanging out in, in a space cocoon in space at the top of this tree, by the way. So he, I, I oh think the implication is either he commits suicide and then ends up joining his sister up in the tree where they sleep together. Not like, not actually, they actually just sleep together. Um, or he climbs up the tree, It you can go either way, and that's legit where the series ends. Uh. I hate it. Yeah, no, I get it. So I, when it's I go bad. into Fire Punch, I went, I can't take this seriously. At all. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, but fair enough. <laughs> that, that's fair. But yeah, uh, I I've been hearing really good things about Chainsaw Man. I'm gonna give it a go next week because I'm in the middle of rereading uh, Black Butler. Do we want to talk about Black Butler? I'm up to date. I'm not um, up to date yet. I think I'm off by one or two chapters. Okay, so you know the big plot twist. Yep. Oh, oh god. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it kind of makes sense because, like, there was some stuff that just didn't add up, and with the fact with the plot twist being revealed, it kind of makes sense now. But yeah. But still, why? <laughs> it, uh, mm. I. Just... Still like it, I want to say. Yeah, I mean, like there's there's some parts where I've just been like, oh wow, this is the, but then like other parts I've been like, oh hey, this is really good storytelling, like, especially the like when you think like where um in the, when they were doing the theater stuff, like when they when the author tries to imply that Elizabeth is brainwashed, but yeah. she's not really, like. Yeah. You know, that was that was good. We should have just put a spoiler tag on this discussion, shouldn't we? Probably. Yeah, spoiler tag for going on forward, because for me, going into Black Butler, there's only a couple things I dislike. To begin with, I okay. the series has two really major down points. Like, there's that big major choice we can talk about later, and there's the fucking Titanic arc. <laughs> Oh yeah, that was bad, but I would know why they had they did it because it was trying to be a prelude to this twist. I do understand it now. I still yeah, don't like it. Yeah, it's a setup, but, but it's... it's still fucking retarded. Because I still it can't is. get over the fact it's zombie Titanic. Plus, they're Nazi zombies. They're not Nazi zombies. I'm joking. I'm trying to confuse they're the just, audience. They're not even supposed to be zombies. They're just soulless beings. I know, I'm confusing them trying to, but you're on that. I'm, I'm, so, well, I'm oh. sorry, but we not we can't tell the audience about the Nazi zombies yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. 
defeating. We got, no, we, we are we defeating. There is no. Nazis. There is no. We have. We do have Nazis at some point, but it has nothing to do with zombies. <laughs> I don't like that bit as much. Yeah. The whole uh, Nazi thing, like, like. Eh. It wasn't. They weren't really, really Nazis. This was the 18th century. Remember. I don't know they weren't really Nazis, but like. Come on, it's German people being a German soldiers oppressing people. They're basically Nazis. No, they're not really. The comparison was unavoidable. But uh, oh well. yeah, um, I think that plot twist is what is the other thing that really bothers me without going into the anime. Um, it's mm. just. The fact they reveal that CL isn't actually CL and it's, he's been co- covering for his well, dead brother. He's not was... really dead. He's kind of been kept alive the whole time. No, no, but, he was dead. He... He's just had his soul brought back. That's how the bizarre dolls work. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and then it's that's... just... I just don't like that. But yet again... It, it, I... Going back, they, they, I mean, like they, feel, they left it ambiguous enough for that reveal to work. But they also like left out some de- like details and like some of the, especially some of the, like the earlier flashback scenes. Like they don't didn't reveal the whole thing in order, which kind of makes sense and kind of like didn't like fall over the whole like oh hey, this is the thing. Like they planned this out, but it just like made it they still made it pretty like hard to make it believable even with all the little hints that were at the start of the series yeah it was just still, so, like, so out of like left field is what bothers me yeah cuz like yes there was set up for it yes there were little hints about it in the early stages of the the series but like how they how they handled it when they eventually revealed the thing was very out of left field, like, because like, I don't know whether it was intentional or not is my problem because they did deliberately do the beta switch with Elizabeth, where we thought she was brainwashed, going by how the chapters are written and like shown, but then it's revealed she's not actually brainwashed, that there is another CL. Well, the real CL. Yeah, but... I think they were given the same name anyway. Which is really confusing. No, 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 no. They're both not CL. CL. We don't even know what... Do we call him fake CL? I don't know. I Exactly, because, like, I'm pretty sure they were called the same thing. Or he just wasn't given a name by his parents. Either way, it's confusing. I, you know, I'm looking up CL Phantom Life right now. And we'll see if he's actually... Alright, what are this? We call one the L, we call the other one CL. Because CL is the okay, dead sense. one, and the L is the one we're familiar with. Yes. I'm kind of glad with the stance of the servants, outside of, you know, the only servant who wasn't added to, wasn't scouted by CL, the, the L. <laughs> This is going to still going to confuse me, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, God. Are we talking about Sonaka? I'm just talking about all of them in general. Yeah. Because they all owe him something. And yeah. I really like that they didn't just, like, oh, hey, we're, we are the, the servants of the house. We're going yeah, to but stick with Yeah, but I do like the they house. are giving it reason. Like, we may know Finian's reason for sticking around, but we recently oh, learned yeah. Rin's, May Rin's reason for sticking around. And then... I'm really happy. Ugh, what's the best way to put it? I I can't wait. Yeah, that's right. I can't wait to find out um, Bardo's reason because it's heavy implied he's a oh, an yeah, American cause... soldier. So I'm like, okay, what's his history? What's the context of this? Because like, yeah, no, no, it's it comes up more than like more than once as well. Like, the only definitive like proof is that there was just one panel of him in a, a soldier's uniform, but like. The way he acts, the what tools he uses when he cooks, which is, you know, always horrible, but he always uses military-grade stuff, and it's like, hang on, you got to have some connection to the military. But it was then that panel that solidified it. Yeah, it's kind of implied that, yeah, he's... Yeah, he lost all his comrades, and then somehow he was met there. Yeah. Met by, so yeah, it's uh, the L. Yeah. 
the and Elves. I... So, the one confusing character, though. Right. Da, 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 what's his face? The, 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 Asian the Undertaker. Dude. No, the Asian dude. Oh, Lau. Oh, I like Lau. I like his character. He's, he's like... He's... I do like his character. Okay. No, no. I like his character, but, like, his motivation. We still don't know what they are. Like, it's been heavily implied that he has alter ulterior motives, like, all the way through the series. But, like, we never know what they are. Like, we now money, know... We money, money, money. <laughs> you would think that, but guess who's po now poor? The elf. Yeah. And yet he still helps him. I guess he's just doing it out of his own amusement. Or he's hoping to keep um, the L. He wants to put the L in debt to him. Because remember, that's Maybe. what happened with um, in the Kali arc. They had the Colin Lau's genuine connections as a branch manager of a trade company. And then he, he mentions, like, I do like the fact that I have um, the, the company, the, the Funtim hive company in at, in his debt so i think he just wants that aspect like he's hoping if he helps up the hell like... get back into his position he can just call back on this favor to get away with something shady later down the line maybe but wouldn't it be easier to just switch to cl who not to mention C cl is already like involved with some shady going on going on because like uh, he probably be would undertake. i would argue he would probably trust the l more than this piece of shit <laughs> maybe i'm i'm not quite sure but like even like but still it hasn't been officially revealed so we don't really know why but i i see where you're coming from though i do see where you're coming from um i, I also another question about um Name again? Was it Lu? 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 Lau? Lau? Isn't it? It's Lau. Keep forgetting his name. What? Yeah. Lu. Okay. Lu. How did he get in contact? How did How did he meet the witch? What? Who? Remember the 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 chick that follows him everywhere. Oh, his the... little sister. Yes. Yes. They're not really related. We all know this. Like, but like, how did how did he come in contact with her? That's my real question. Ah, uh, we'll probably find about that in a month. Because is it a month? This is. I don't know. It always takes so long for these chapters to come out. It's like berserk levels of long. Oh yeah. I want to say it's monthly. I want to say it's monthly, but after the same time, it's like. Got look, looking at some of my other like. Like mangas, like I've like had like four or five chapters come out before a Black Butler chapter comes out, so it might might be every three months or something. Like it's not very clear. Mm. Oh well, well. Whenever it does come out, I guess we can talk about it. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna have to catch up faster then, because I'm legitimately starting the Germany arc right now. Yes. Okay, um, I, I guess there's a couple more mangas we could talk about. I've been reading a manga, another manga, that uh, gets updated, I want to say, it looks month, no, it looks like roughly every couple of days. Um, Mao Sama Retry. I've heard of this one. I kind of like it, it has an anime, but I like it because yeah. it's, it's kind of like a, it's like, there's a lot of different Azaki mangas. Like, there's the ones that take uh, themselves it, too seriously. There's the bad. there's the fan bait one, and then there's the one that's just doing it because it's fun. Yeah, the Isekai. Yeah, Isekai. Got it wrong. Um, Isekai. Malsam is around there because legitimately one of the saints is called Killer Queen. No, it's Killer Queen. And I went, oh my mm. fucking god, this is no. This is this is too He's good. A, this this is like, like I've had a deep discussion about this with you. You like isekai is sort of sit in the, like, a lot of them sit in the mediocre areas. But like there's, there's those few ones that sit out and say, "Hey, we're good." Like Konosuba, mm -hmm. great comedy. Not gonna lie. Um, there's very few isekais that actually I'd say recommend to people, but. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. He's okay. But yeah, uh, one, of, one of the chicks is called Fi Butter Fied Porn. <laughs> and her sister is Fied Butter. Is Fied Butter Fied Oyster? I'm like, who eats a Fied Oyster? <laughs> It's that uh, level of like parody, and I love it. <laughs> like, there's a there's like an ongoing character like of a nun who's obsessed with her inner darkness. I'm like, I'm like, oh my god! And then there's a fucking trap witch that's over sexualized. I'm like, oh my god! It's like. <laughs> It's just so ridiculously up, it's like stupid. I just love it. Uh, but, fair enough. Yeah, I would. That's another recommendation. We should do this more often. We should talk about manga and anime more often. We should. Uh, have you read. Okay, this one isn't a manga, but it's a manhwa. Have you read The God of High School? I have. Oh my god, I know this one. Because, um. It just got. Re it recently got an anime. Yeah, John. Yeah. John and his. Group of friends are obsessed with that series. I never got into it because I, I just presumed it was a webtoon, and I'm not a big fan of webtoons. That's fair enough. It does come like the style it goes for does come off as like a webtoon, but it's actually really good. It actually has a plot and stuff, and I mean, some of the later stuff gets a bit convoluted, but it generally keeps pretty well grounded. And God, it's so. Like, the new chapters, because the new chapters have been dedicated to like finally explaining what's happening. Because like, there's a lot of people characters. There's a lot of characters in the series, and a lot of them just their motivations were never really like explained. And now it's finally being explained, and it makes so much sense. Mm. <laughs> Do I think this anime is going to survive that long? No. Yeah. No. Uh I guess another manga I want to bring up, like two more, I guess. Um, the numbers, also known as Nambaka, have you read that? that I think that's a Japanese webtoon. Uh, I remember it was a manga, and then it got moved to a webtoon. I haven't read more than what the anime had. Okay, so you've seen like season one and season two, then that's good. I mean, yeah. um, I mean watching it. Oh, I mean mm. watching it, and I mean reading it. I'm caught up t today on it, and then I'm um, I. <laughs> It's a weird thing, because it's... Because when it turned into a webtoon, around the time it turned into a webtoon, it became from, like, a comedy manga to... It's a battle manga. It was weird. But then... Yeah, and then no. they kind of used it... Used that aspect to divert the characters further. They're just not fucking characters. There's actually some depth I'm to these characters. Up. And I that's what I like about it. Yeah, no... This was something they sort of, like, I think when it got turned into a webtoon, like, it, like, sort of, like, was around when the anime was, like, airing, and, like, a lot of the battle aspects have shown up in the anime, which I know a lot of people who had watched the anime didn't really like, because they kind of felt, like, it's the, the tone shift was very sudden. Yeah, I don't blame like, them. I you, don't you kind blame of have to stick around liking. with it to get get your worth out of it, to be honest. Yeah, because you... Cause you I mean, you're starting from a comedy side of things. I mean, there was a plot to it. Like, we all knew the plot was there. But, like, at the same time, it's like, mm. Yeah, it kind of, the battle part just came out of nowhere. Mm. But, mm. yeah, uh... But... Oh, I've been rereading World Trigger. Oh, you God, we can get to that later. I don't want to talk about that as well shit we, this is gonna be a really long episode now because we just opened yeah, the floodgates but anyway no going back to Nambaka you know, like after this arc in building 5 building 5 is the one with all the martial artists right yes okay after that arc which I really liked because it, it it was wow it was really actually well written with really good character development um it kind of, after that, it starts to set up the world. Like, yeah, it's going back into, tries to be a little bit more comedic yet again. But it sets up the world. Like, first things first, we learn about the organization that runs Numbaka Prison. Ooh. And we also learn that there's actually 
a female equivalent of the prison, which, because you like, have you ever wondered why in Numbaka the only female is legitimately the warden? Yes. Yeah. Oh, and also that science joke, but they don't matter. What? Because of course you can't have in real life male and female prisoners mingling. No, you cannot. So there's a female equivalent of Numbaka, which is ran by a male for some reason. It knows he has no legs, so he he wears glass prosthetics. <laughs> which has heels, <laughs> by the way. What? Yeah, he has heel his prosthetics are glass heel boots. Okay. Yeah. That came out of left field. And then they're kind of setting up one of the other wardens as like this weird eccentric inventor type that's actually probably evil. <laughs> like they yeah. had very heavy handling going. He's probably evil, you know. He's like, this guy here. Yeah, he he's really obsessed with those shackles <laughs> that the main character has. Number fifteen has. Yeah, because they set that up, like even in the anime, which I'm I was surprised where they ended the anime. Do you know where they ended the anime? I am. I cannot tolerate watching season two. To be fair. <laughs> okay, so they they ended the anime at the final boss fight. The season ends at the boss fight. Of <laughs> like, you know the end Enki. of that arc with Enki. Wait, is this with Enki? Yeah. Um, the 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 big monk gorilla man. I think so. Yep, okay, yeah, I know that part, yep. They, I know what you're talking about. They do they, they actually end it on that? They don't don't even finish it? They don't, they don't do the they don't do the fight. They just end it there. They really tease that hard for C fuck me. <laughs> they need a season yeah. three. But th right now I don't think there's enough content for season three. Exactly. Cause, it's cause season <laughs> So we've got to be waiting a while for season three. Absolutely. <sighs> they were that confident, and mind you, the the anime for this is like was airing in two thousand and fifteen. So season two was two thousand eighteen. Like, season two was two thousand eighteen. Yeah, but yeah. the first season was two thousand fifteen. So we're gonna be Sorry, waiting at least another good year before we can, before I can call it dead. Yeah. That was not that was not a good move on their part. I'm not gonna lie. You know what's the worst part? I have yes. a Blu-ray for Numbaka, and it only has season one. And on the box, it says the complete series. I'm like, bullshit! You don't even have season two on this shit. <laughs> so it's like That's they just don't even acknowledge that season two is a thing. I mean, probably people that hated it so much that they probably were like, "Oh, we better drop this some water." <sighs> anyway, but yes. Now to, are we going to move on to War Trigger? Sure. God, it's been a while since I've had World Trigger. World Trigger is fun. The reason why I wanted to bring it up mainly was because the guy who um, writes and like illustrates World Trigger, he's finally coming out of hospital. But he was in finally... hospital. That's why you sp I haven't seen updates for ages. Fuck. Oh, okay then. Shit. Now I feel like yeah, shit. Yeah, like he for what I'm about to say about World Trigger. In... Yeah, he was back in. 2013, he was in and out of hospital, and then he's been in hospital up until recent. Uh, I don't know if he's out yet, but yeah, he's been until my to my knowledge up till current has been in hospital the whole time. Okay, all right. So he, he's yeah. Yeah, just talk about your manga uh, because I'm just gonna I have yet again more things to say. Yeah. Um. So been re, -re reading World Trigger. And it still holds up. I love it. <laughs> okay, alright. Are you ready for what I'm about to say then? Yes. Okay, I have a 2018 review where I write, write about World Trigger. Do you want to know what my title is for this? What? World Trigger, too dull to be triggering. Ooh. I was that really? bored by the series, because it... I will admit, even after that review, I would still casually read the series. Okay. So, it's more like... Uh... 
What exactly dulled you? Well, to begin with, there was an absolute lack of stakes. Like, there was no immediate threat of danger to anyone. How so? Because think how, because think how does the try on body system works? Fair enough. That thing is pretty stakeless half the time. Yeah, it, it, it was like it wasn't. And then when they actually try to introduce stakes, I just went, "This is not how you do it. You just this is makes no sense. It breaks the rules. It just, I don't like mm. this." But then after that, and then we then we ended that stupidly fucking long torment arc, and I went, "Oh my fucking god! Just move to the interesting part." Like, I want to find out more I, about the I, world. I, I don't want to be here learning about fucking teams I don't want to remember. But most of them come off again. I don't That's the thing. fucking care. <laughs> I want to learn more about these other worlds where these aliens, the neighbors are coming from. I don't want okay, to I, know I, about I, fucking all these faceless teenagers. It's like Bleach. That's my problem with it. It's like Bleach. It's a bunch of fucking okay. people you have to remember, and then they expect you to care about them. I'm like, fuck. I get, I get it. So like, the it's less about like the actual like 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 thing, and more about like the direction the story has taken. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. I I disagree, but then again, that's probably because I have different tastes to you. Oh, I don't disagree about it being dull for you because you you have legitimate reasons why it's dull. It is, I do, I like it, but I do agree that there are no fucking stakes at the beginning, and when they do introduce them, it's like a little too late. Um, but it does set, set up a lot of interesting things, and thankfully, before he went into hospital, the author basically gave us an interesting thing to pick up from, which was another invasion. Oh, thank so, God. Because that was what I was leaving on, because I remember, because the last chapter was, you remember the neighbor they captured with the horns? Yeah. He was leaving the the base of, you know, the secondary base, the Tokiyami base, or whatever it's called. It's yeah, a yeah, yeah. very an inconvenient word. Um, And then the black portals open up, and he starts fighting with some other neighbors with black triggers. Yeah. So... We when we when it does pick up again, it's going to pick up straight off into an invasion, and probably force the characters into a position there. They're gonna have to go expedition. So good. The, the plot is going to pick up as soon as he gets back out. So whenever that is, because I remember it. Because I remember because. The same chapter was the chapter where they finished the tournament arc anyway. Mm. So. Mm. Yeah. That was a big stretch. Yeah. <sighs> okay. okay. I, I, so. Uh, my, I guess, because we should be wrapping this up soon, my other manga I want to talk about is... Have you heard of Hell's Paradise? Vaguely. Okay, because I recently just picked up its physical copy from uh, my local manga supply shop, um, Shin Tokyo. Okay. It's it's being published by Viz, Ma um, oh, Viz. Viz Media. Oh my god. It's oh, not that no. bad. It's my own problem so far. No, 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 no. I'm only saying this because Viz Media is like handles things poorly, so be warned about that. It's not that um, bad. My own problem with it is legitimately twice the size of a normal manga book. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, that's the same as the Tokyo Ghoul one. Yeah, I'm, I put it on my shelf. And I'm like, it's legitimately bigger than my copies of, like, Berserk and Beyblades. And I'm like, well, fuck me. Yeah, uh, I'm just saying that Viz Media, with, it's to do with distribution more than anything. Viz Media is not the best distributor because, like, they'll distribute, like, say, the first few chapters, and then they'll skip all the way to, like, the ending chapter. Mm. Oh, shit, like, my no grad's calling me. Uh, you keep going, I'm just gonna mute. Uh, what else am I gonna talk about? I was just responding to you. Yeah, just talk about how much you hate Viz Media. Bad distribution companies, what can I say? They don't do the jobs right, they just 
not gonna make money. What else is there to say? That was very impromptu. Um, I handle a lot of popular stuff. And it makes it very hard to find like the middle chapters. It's the same as when you walk into a bookstore which sells manga. You get like my Hero Academia is a good example. You get like four copies of the first chap, like first volume, and then you see that the second volume you get the same amount. Third volume you start to see a decrease, and then you have just the middle section, and the people have taken single copies of them, like middle section. That's sort of what Viz Media is like. Not very good. Um, most of you probably would. The best way to segment it is to, uh, like, order them online individually. But even that's a hassle. It's the same with, same thing about how you, when you walk into a convention, you'll only see the first volume of something. It's the same premise. Not the greatest. Distribution, um... There's a lot better publishers. Well, not publishers, just distributors. Um... So yeah, don't if you are an up-and-coming comic fan, comic writer or manga writer or whatever, don't choose a fizz. Choose something actually reliable. Ooh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I I was eating it up because while you were talking, while I was talking to my grand about something really serious, um, you sound like one of those info commercials, like you sound like you know like the Michael Jordan ones, like. Hey, McDonald's has given me this time to tell you to not do drugs. That's what you reminded me of. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, BC has given me the time to tell you do not pick this. There are better publica publication. But no, my, my grand was calling me because um, she was supposed to pick the kids up from school today, but the kids didn't um, come, and they're not here yet, so she was worried. Ah. Uh. Uh, but, yeah, um... I guess to quickly just sum up Hell's Paradise, because my she did say she'll call me in the in another five minutes if she can't find them. Pretty much, um, it's about a guy. He's pre suicidal. He's like a suicide ninja who can't die. He ends up being recruited by the Shogun, because the Shogun this is like Edo. They recently found a mysterious island, and hmm. it, it, they and the Shogun believes the Fountain of Youth may be there. Thing is. It's full to the brim of just terrifying things, and like when the research come back, he's legitimately been turned into a plant. <laughs> no, no, it's no. You think it's funny, but he's still a guy. He's just been fucking lobotomized because a plant is growing out of him. Oh, it's like uncomfortable body horror in a way, and like all the monsters are based on like. The best way to put it is they're all based on, like, Buddhist things. Oh. But, yeah, it's really interesting. And the further you get into it, it actually gets a lot more deeper. Because they have to learn, like, a martial arts. And then you find out they have, like, these godlike figures on the island. It has a, it draws a lot of inspiration for Bud from Buddhism for it. And Ooh. that's what I really like about it. The art style is amazing. The monster design is amazing. The plot gets a bit iffy, but yet again, that's why I... I that's another recommendation for me, to be fair. Okay. But, yeah, I was, when I saw a physical copy of it in Shindokyo, I went, I'm getting that straight off the bat. Because I got a membership discount, so I get it for like $10. Ah, oh, sad that I can't go anywhere. Oh no, I got a comic store in Perth, which sells a lot of manga. Oh yes, you got yeah, Comic no Pop. No. Oh. That's not what I was thinking of. But, are you, oh, what, did that still go away already? I don't know. <laughs> it's not the place I'm talking about. Okay then. Isn't uh, Tokyo Underground gone now? Uh, Tokyo Underground is basically turned into a uh, pitiful thing. Uh, unless you are a um, one of those, ex you know, uh, you know the archetype, uh, the, the, the um mainstream weeb. No, not weeb. 
Not not mainstream the, um, weeb. Okay then. God, it's the Kawaii boring. girls. Oh, we're talking about the ones that like watch Sailor Moon. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> no, those ones that like as soon as they see a cute fluffy bunny, are like, oh, Kawaii, and want to. Kawaii sort of... Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Not going to lie, I would probably still go to that store. <laughs> I wouldn't. There's no fun anywhere, and there's, the only thing that would interest me is a giant size Gampla, which is overpriced. So why would I go there? Good, fo good point, good point. But yeah, okay. Um, I guess we should end it here. We should make this a regular thing. We should just talk about anime and manga we watch. I said we should put severe limitations We're... on ourselves for it. Yes, because I talked about like maybe six or seven series. Yeah, in the so... span of an hour. Okay, what and about then, this? Like, we'll, make that... was... we'll make that part of the I've podcast been... where we both have to talk about a manga or anime we read or watched that week. Okay. Done. Okay, and we, we can one, do the tier list occasionally. Yes. Uh, I mean, the tier list we won't probably expand on too much anyway because, like, we'll generally do it when <laughs> we'll we. save the tier list for when we have actual guests. Yes. Which we can now do! Yeah! I mean, I asked Jamie last night on stream and he said he had work today! What? Jamie's streaming. Oh, no, 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 not that bad. About the work. Oh, it was either work what? or training. I asked him, he was like, nah. Nah, I'm working or something. Okay, I'm confused. I'm very confused. Because, like, the last time I talked to him about work, he said Tuesday, Wednesday is his day is off. So, yeah. But, and then he changed, does um, thing on, things on weekdays. Hang on, let me go. I'm going to go pick up my thing. Okay, why you do that? Oh, Wednesday, Thursday. Oh, for fuck you, he could join us Friday. <laughs> no, Wednesday, Thursday. Wednesday, Thursday, is his yeah. day's off. Yes. Okay, so he could have joined anyway. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Oh yeah, well, do we okay. want to acknowledge that last week I fucked up the thumbnail? No. <laughs> oh, it's no, been funny. Don't. I forgot that the weak part is the G says there is too much Yu-Gi-Oh news. This. <laughs> I I mean, this. like I have fun with those descriptions because I just like. I know you do. Hang on. Which is fine. It's it's cool. I, I'm gonna have fun. Uh, I, and we should be ending. <laughs> yeah, we should be <laughs> ending. We, we keep talking. <laughs> we need to plug our channel to like shit. Um, I'm doing FAs. Are you? Yes, I'm doing an FA revisit. I may made the thumbnail. It's gonna be FA fast tracked. Well, my stuff is about homebrew stuff, and I have I'm not doing anything this week. I'm doing it next week. So. Yeah. Uh, gimmicky, I'll... gimmick tech video, maybe out this week or next week, because I finished the script. You did? Yeah, it's, just, it, it's because it was really depressing. By the time I got to the, like, as soon as I started doing tech cards and deck builds, I went, fuck me, I just, I hate this video. I want to get this video out now, but I, so I can just move on with my life. <laughs> it's like the bottom of a depression. It's like, oh, wait, we're still talking. <laughs> Let's finish it. <laughs> but, but, but I want to talk about FAs for a little bit. Shit! I know! We'll talk about it later. Okay, we'll talk about it next week. we we'll talk about FA combos next week. Promise. Done. Alright, good. Alright, moving on. Uh, <laughs> bye, everyone. Bye.